Hi, welcome back to our channel. My name is Jolie and today is December 29th. We're going to read from Ellen on Literature. We're going to read from The Courage to Change. And we have Hope for Today and One Day at a Time in Al-Anon. So we'll start with One Day at a Time in Al-Anon. Let's see what page we're on. We are on page 364. And yes, we will be starting to read Discovering Choices uh, starting January 1st. I'm not sure the format, but we're going to add it somehow into the reading. Uh, whether that is, just not sure yet. But I'm just gonna, like a fool, <laughs> just go for it. And um, so anyway, um, and at the end of this, we'll say the serenity prayer. And that's, and maybe we'll, we'll pull a card. I think we're gonna pull a card. So, all right, here we go. Grateful that you guys are here with me. And let's see what we got. There are some things I absolutely refuse to accept, says a member at a meeting. This is too often true of someone who suffers from inordinate pride or is unable to admit they are ever wrong. Before I decide I cannot accept this or that, I had better examine my part in the deadlock. Where is my expectations? Where my expectations unreasonable were they? And did I demand too much? Am I being confronted with a natural reprisal for my rigid, uncompromising attitude? <laughs> Maybe. If we have hurt someone or demanded too much of them, swift retribution may dismay or infuriate us. Shouldn't we search out the causes and do something to correct them? Today's reminder, I may feel ever so justified in taking a stand, but let me consider whether it was something I did that led to the crisis. To remain unyielding may result in disaster. I am still less prepared to accept. And there's a quote from Thomas A. Kempis, and um, it says, we are quick enough at perceiving and weighing what we suffer from others, but we mind not what others suffer from us. So this is a good one for me. What's my part in the deadlock? Am I uncompromising? Do I have a is my attitude like my way or the highway? I know it used to be for sure. And I thought that that's uh, what I needed to do in order to get something that I needed done. Um, though I was um, working with um, others that were also unyielding. And I kept in with that uh, group. Uh, of unyielders. So I just always um, became passive and then I would become aggressive because I'm like, I'm not getting my stuff. I'm not getting what I think I need needs done. Why don't you listen to me? Because we would, you know, we're in business and um, partnerships in business uh, when you have, um, especially when there's alcoholism involved with that too much partying and narcissism and uh, you, you know, like you this and you that, this is your role, black and white thinking. So black and white thinking, um, I heard in a meeting today that it's, it, it gets us in trouble because we have that unyielding um, gray area that is always there that we need in order to work with the group, uh, work with group conscience. And um, if we are in a group that's unyielding all the time, then you know that's a possibility that you're not in the right group. 
I don't know whether that's partnership or you know whatever. Um, that's just for me to remember that if I keep having the visual of me running my head up against a wall and not getting anything that I'm saying considered, acknowledged or heard, then I might need to, you know, what did someone say today? They said, um, so I don't say anything. I just make a note of assessment instead of judgment. And then I put it in their file you know, like the imaginary file. And then maybe I won't participate with that person as often or at all, depending on how much, how many assessments go into their file. <laughs> so I think that's kind of interesting, especially um, considering uh, the Mercury day, you know, like something to consider, something to think about. And where is Mercury today? I believe Mercury is is in uh, Capricorn, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong, but I'm just getting that vibe, especially with the the necktie and the whole. You know, I feel like I'm I'm ready to go to a job interview or something. <laughs> so, but um, I have plenty of jobs. I don't need another one right now. So. But uh, yeah, that's uh, something that just came up for me. All right, so here we go. We'll read Hope for today. Hope you guys are doing okay. Here we go. And you know, it's okay not to be okay. The toilet and the bathroom thing, cross your fingers, <laughs> is fixed. I called somebody um, who I trust, who's in construction. And I said, do you have someone that you use for plumbing? And he said, yes, I have a great guy. Here's his number. He texted me the number. I called the number. The guy said, okay, any friend of his is a friend of mine. So he came over with his family, his son, his uncle. They came and fixed the bathroom. They were done. They like figured it out, like firemen figured out what was wrong, fixed it, and left. And I'm like, it's almost like I don't remember I had it even happen. So, you know, I just made sure I made the call. And I felt good about it. I, I felt like I could trust them because I had someone else that I trusted that trusted them. Right, so it was all, it felt good. Like the steps towards it felt good. It's done. And um, I feel confident that if anything else happens that they would be there. So, oh, look who's coming, Kitty. All right, so we'll read Hope for today. I just wanted to let you know how it was going. And I'm glad you guys, your, your bathrooms are doing okay too now. <laughs> So I've always had poor balance, unsteady on ladders, unhappy hiking downhill, unable to put my socks on while standing. Some time ago, I watched a karate black belt competition. Much of the fighter's attention was focused on how his foot was planted on the ground. Only partial attention went to the other airborne foot. I decided to undertake developing some of the same partnership with gravity to learn to center myself over my planted foot. In time, I became much better at putting on my socks. Recently, while picking my way across wet rocks beside a favorite stream, I felt a strong connection with the earth. My balance was sure, my choice of foothold certain and carefree. I could turn my attention to the scampering squirrels and grazing deer. I realized that in the same way, I am learning to walk within the inexplorable, let me read that again, inexorable, 
pull of gravity. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm also learning to center myself in God's will. By using the many tools of Al-Anon, I'm releasing my need to control and I'm learning to find my balance despite the strong, often unexpected winds of change and desire. Thought for today, little by little, one day at a time, by accepting things I cannot change and changing the things I can, I will become more centered in God's gift of serenity. There's a quote from Courage to Change, page 54. It says, Elanon helps me to find some balance. That balance to me is like that um, planting myself somewhere, is to having some stability. I feel like I've planted and created my own stability, which is seventh tradition, is to um, be self-sufficient in the best way I can, little by little, one day at a time. Um, I'm doing the best I can. Plus, the balance thing. I'm not afraid of, of going up on ladders. Just one type of ladder. I don't like the kind where they, is it the one where you, it's just the one ladder piece that leans up against the, the roof where it kind of like bounces when you get up it. I will not, I won't go on that one. That to me doesn't feel like there's, like I'm good with something that has like a triangle thing going or a scaffolding. I can do that. I can go up 25 feet. No problem. Well, there is a problem, you know, it kind of sways around a little bit, but as long as I know that, you know, people who built it, built it, and I've, you know, you know tested it out a little bit here and there, um, then I get myself, like, I call it getting my legs on before I do a job. And that's like, if I paint ceilings and things like that, which I haven't done lately, but who knows? If it happens again, I will. Um, yeah, and then the other thing is, yeah, you always see me, I'm always like jogging around because yeah, I'm standing up, I'm trying to get my balance and um, I always wish that I could just be still. But I'm not, let's see how, how I can do that. I will, I'll pray to be still <laughs> if I can. All right, courage to change. Ah, triangular shaped frame of legs. Here we go. Page 364. And courage to change. It kind of matches the candles burning in the background. So there are times reading, when everything the alcoholic in my life does irritates me. Sometimes they even seem to pour the breakfast cereal wrong. Although it's important for me to learn to recognize and protect myself from unacceptable behavior, that's not always what is going on. When I catch myself watching and criticizing every little detail of their behavior, I can use this as a signal that something is going on with me that I've missed or discounted. I'm afraid of an upcoming review. Am I afraid of an upcoming review at my job? Did something I heard at a meeting, stir up unresolved anger from my past? Am I acting this way because of an old resentment I have chosen not to discuss? Making an Al Anon phone call can help me sort it out. So, today's reminder it can be almost as hard for me to give up criticizing as it is for the alcoholic to give up drinking. Sometimes it seems so necessary. But though criticism and negative thinking can serve 
as a steam valve for my pain. They never solve my problems. They never solve the problems. Uh, they only distract me from them. In the end, I only avoid getting to know myself. And there's a quote from Mandela Mocher Sephorum. It says, a man can detect a speck in another's hair, but can't see the flies in his own nose. <laughs> Very graphic. Yeah, right? I can relate to that. So for me, what this is definitely uh, if if I start getting agitated by someone, it's because I have a resentment that I haven't addressed or said, oh, I don't have resentment. I'm fine. I'm good. Fine. What does fine mean? Let me see. Let me tell you what fine means. When someone says I'm fine, let me ignore the woman here. I always put a woman on my phone. So that's not even what it means. Do you remember what fine means? What fine means? Oh, come on. Fine meaning. <laughs> Ignore that. Sorry, excuse me. It means um, frustrated insecure, neurotic, emotional, or exhausted. Or it can mean effed up, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. <laughs> so, so whenever, I mean, I used to say I'm fine all the time. I'm fine all the time. And then when um, I heard that in a meeting one day, I was like, oh my God. So now I notice when everybody else says they're fine. I'm like, oh, they're really not. <laughs> so anyway, I'll leave it at that. All right. So um, we'll say the serenity prayer for those who don't want to participate in the tarot pool. So we'll go ahead and so we can end the meeting with that. And um, I want to say thank you. And I'm really grateful for you guys. For your shares and the likes really help others to find us so i really appreciate that and um what else subscribe if you haven't already and in on the other uh, series so far um what are we doing here today's lesson was where are we oops i am like stuttering today so today's lesson there's a lesson on a four course in miracles, so go check that out if you haven't already. And all of the lessons are already um, uploaded up until like 274 so far, and um, they will continue until the end. And all right, so let's say the Serenity Prayer. Yeah, it's right there sleeping. All right, here we go. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things we can't change, to have the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. So God's will be done. Keep coming back. It works if you work it because you're worth it. All right. So, <laughs> all right. And for those who are still here, I'm going to go ahead and pull a card. So, I loved that um, what uh, Fryer shared today. Um, well, on the on the last card pull, and um, it was really helpful. We pulled the fool yesterday, and um, he offered some amazing insight as always. And also check out his channel. He has some. Uh, he does the tarot and some other amazing things 
there as well. So you can check his in the link um, bio. And uh, I'll go ahead and see if I can put that in there. If not, um, where he comments, you can just click on the comments where Friar is and then you can go to his channel. Okay. All right. I hope you don't mind me mentioning that, but um, I think it's pretty amazing. So, okay. So let's see, how's it gonna be? Let's pull the card for the day. Oh, goes right. Oh my gosh, again, again, what's going on? The death card again. This one is so like, oh, very interesting. All right, there it is again. Change, 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 and rebirth. <laughs> Interesting. Let's see the back of the card. Isn't this beautiful? Very beautiful card. I was thinking I'd love to get this kind of tattoo. Wouldn't that be cool? Maybe on the spine. So anyway, yeah, the Visconti deck that this comes from uh, they don't know who the artist is per se. It is, um, it's registered, uh, but the uh, Visconti was the, um, was, the, uh, was the princess that um, a gentleman married into. And then this was, this card game was, and they're like a, a family um, owns most of them. And there were actually four cards and the death card was one of the cards that they couldn't find the originals for. So that was a little addition to that. So anyway, you guys, I love you. I'll see you tomorrow. God willing. All right. And see you later. Have a good one.